Welcome to Soul Medication, your weekly biblical encouragement, the podcast that nourishes your soul and strengthens your faith through the timeless wisdom of God's Word. I'm your host, Michelle Brooks, and I'm honored to be your guide as we delve into the transformative power of Scripture. Each week, we'll open the pages of the Bible and explore the purposes, direction, and guidance that God has for us. Together, we'll study the principles that can shape our daily lives and bring us closer to our Creator. As we embark on this journey, we'll seek the Holy Spirit's guidance and pray so that we may truly understand and apply God's truth in our lives. Whether you're a seasoned believer or just beginning your spiritual journey, Soul Medication is here to uplift and inspire you. Together, let's find solace in God's Word, find strength in His promises, and find hope in His unfailing love. Subscribe to Soul Medication on your favorite podcast platform and join our community of faith-filled individuals who are seeking biblical encouragement and spiritual growth. Let's open our hearts and minds to the transformative power of God's Word as we walk together on this journey of faith. Good morning. Happy Monday. I'm so excited and blessed to be back here bringing you encouragement from God's Word. Welcome to another episode of Soul Medication, your spiritual dose for the day. I am your host, Michelle. Well, up until Thursday, I thought I was on the right path. I was going in one direction until I really just felt God leading me down a different road. So today I'm going to pour out my heart with some things that I have been struggling with. And I know that many of us may have the same struggle. So let's start our time today in prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray that as we look at your word today, your Holy Spirit would guide us into all truth as he brings us the things of you and your desires for us. Open our hearts and our minds and give us a desire to want to do your will, even if our earthly desires are stronger. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today I want to share how I have been I don't want to say struggling, but just really occupied lately with praying for our country, for the divisiveness. And for so long, I've been observing. Now, there's that introvert thing. I can watch. I watch the political parties. I watch the news media and I watch social media. And I can't be the only one sitting here shaking my head. So much sensationalism, so much twisting. And it's not one sided. And then I feel convicted by the word of God, where it says for us to pray for our leaders. First Timothy two tells us, therefore I exert first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for Kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. There's nothing there about praying for our leaders when we don't agree with them, is there? Let me ask, because I think about this, so let me just throw this out there. I've prayed for our leaders. I've agreed with prayers in church and Bible study, and as others are praying for our leaders. And this was Timothy's direction to the church for part of their public worship. And it is scriptural that we should be subject to our leaders. So how do we pray for them when we feel that the corruption is so deep? How can we as believers know how to pray when we don't even know what is true? In Amos, in the seventh chapter, in verses seven to eight, Amos had a similar question, and this is what it says. This is what he showed me. The Lord was standing by a wall that had been built true to plumb, with a plumb line in his hand, and the Lord asked me, what do you see, Amos? A plumb line, I replied. Then the Lord said, look, I'm setting a plumb line among my people Israel. I will spare them no longer. So if you do not know what a plumb line does, it's a line or a cord that you hold at one end, most likely at the top of a wall or 
whatever you're building. And it has at the other end a weight. So it hangs down such as a plumb bob. And it's used especially to determine what we call verticality, or it gives you that vertically straight line so that whatever you're trying to build a straight line up and down is perpendicular, has that perfect 90 degree angle. It's square. So those corners will be square. God has given us a plumb line. When we don't know what is true, we have the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth, and we have the divinely inspired Word of God. So now let's look at how we can use this to help us pray for our leaders in our country. In Proverbs 28.2, when a land transgresses, it has many rulers. But when the ruler is a man of discernment, understanding and knowledge, its stability will long continue. We can pray that our leaders be men and women of discernment, understanding, and knowledge. Sometimes I get this thought popping up in my mind, that discouraging thought that it's useless. This is never going to change. And this is the devil. And he's trying to disarm you because we know where the battle truly lies. It doesn't lie with the White House or the people that we may not agree with. It lies in the spiritual realm. Ephesians 6.12 tells us, For we are not wrestling with flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the, against the despotisms, against the powers, against the master spirits who are the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spirit forces of wickedness, in the heavenly or supernatural sphere. One way we can pray is according to Romans 13. We first need to thank God because whether you agree with the election results or not, there is no authority except from God. And the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Romans 13, 1. And often we stop here. We thank God for our leaders. We pray for their protection. We pray for godly wisdom and guidance and good counsel. But what else can we pray and how? We can pray to Romans 13, 3, that our rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil, that they will execute judgment against evil. This is a powerful intercessory prayer for us. So how do we pray when we feel anxious, when we're not sure, when we're frustrated? Who doesn't get frustrated and anxious at times? I sometimes find that I was really needing to continuously come back to the Lord. I feel that this has been a considerable attack by the enemy and I know what to do. I know the word. I know that the Bible tells us not to be anxious, but my mind would continue to stray, to think of things going on and fear would creep back in. And I would stop wherever I was and I would start quoting scripture. I would say, first of all, resist the devil and he will flee. And I would continue. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of wisdom, power, and a sound mind. I have the mind of Christ. In him, I live and move and have my being. And I would continue as the spirit kept bringing me my arsenal of verses in this battle. So let's look at what God has to say about fear and anxiety in relation to what in the world is going on. Let's look at Isaiah 41.10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Fear not. God is saying there's nothing to fear. Now he's speaking here to the exiled Jews as they were captive in Babylon. And the reason they had nothing to fear was because they were the chosen people of God. In earlier verses, he's talking to Israel, who I have chosen, whom he has called from the ends of the earth. Now, according to Romans 11, salvation came to the Gentiles and we're grafted in. Ephesians 1.4 tells us we are chosen. Romans 8.15, we received the spirit of adoption and we can call God, Abba, Father, Daddy. And the promise here is one that may be addressed to all God's people 
finding themselves in some sort of bondage and physical or spiritual captivity, needing that confirmation from God. And he tells us, I am your God. I will strengthen and harden you to difficulties. Yes, I will help you. Yes, I will hold you up and retain you with my victorious hand of rightness and justice. In other words, he's saying, I got gotcha. you. Now, why should we not be afraid? Because he is with us. He is our protector. When I would reflect on my fears, almost always it is linked to one thing, fear of the unknown. I've said this before, call it fear, dread, anxiety, terror. It is most often related to something that has not happened or the outcome or the extent of the outcome is unknown. So what can we do when we find ourselves in these situations, but pray? We know that is what God wants from us as a primary response. Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything. Sometimes I just read that verse in Philippians and I can't help but think about the magnitude of the importance of these words. I think about the things that begin to cause my heart to become anxious and we need to condition ourselves so that we are aware. Self-awareness is for Christians too. And more so we need to be aware that when little that little anxiety bug starts flittering onto the scene. We need to be aware of what God's word, our plumb line, our truth and biblical worldview, where they stand with it. Because when we feel that little skip in our heartbeat, that is a common reaction to what we're calling these intrusive thoughts, but let's call it like it is. It's an attack from the enemy who prowls around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And he is there to steal your joy. Paul had just written to rejoice in the Lord always. He said it twice. And again, I say rejoice. And Satan is there to steal your peace. And when you get just the inkling that he is lurking, trying to get his foot in the door of your mind or your home, what are we to do? Let's look at our truth. Philippians 4, 6. Don't be anxious, but in every circumstance and in everything, every circumstance and in everything. Did you hear that? There is no algorithm. There's no protocol. There's no flow chart. This is an easy one. Every single time we deal with anxiety or fear, we deal with it with prayer and petition. We need to make a definite request. Often my first initial request is often Jesus or Jesus help me. When you are in the midst of fear and anxiety and thoughts are clouding your mind, Satan knows if he can mess up your mind, he can get you ruminating and calculating out the most horrific events in your mind. And he keeps you busy from using the word of God. So ask for God's help at this time. Help me, Lord, help me to think and use your word. Resist the devil and he will flee. Start quoting scripture. If you need to write down a couple powerful verses, do it and have them handy. Write them and post them around the house. Keep a copy for your purse, take photos, keep them on your phone. The Bible tells us to take our thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ. We need to line up our thoughts with God and his truths. So we get anxious and worry. We catch ourselves and we begin to pray with thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, that you've given me the mind of Christ. Thank you, Lord, that you are with me always, that you hold me up with your rightness, with your righteous right hand, that the battle is yours and you go before me. And as you do this, you're thinking on the things that are true. Now that jumps ahead to verse eight. But essentially, this reflection on God and all his awesome attributes and love for you brings a result. As we continue to make our requests made known to God, and often mine are so literal and elementary, I tell God like it is, Lord, I don't know what to pray for. I don't know who to pray for. I don't know how to pray for them. 
There's so much unrest right now. I see so much that I don't know who's telling me the truth. I'm not sure who to believe anymore, but I'm praying for our nation and for the believers in our nation. I'm praying for our leaders. And I continue to lay out my prayers and tell God exactly what has me stressed out that day. And where does this lead us? When we pray according to how we should pray when we are anxious, as it says here in Philippians 4, it leads us to God's peace. God's word says if we get into a circumstance that causes anxiety, we're not to fret, but to bring it to him with thanksgiving and the peace of God shall be yours. The peace, that tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation through Christ. And so fearing nothing from God and being content with its earthly lot of whatever sort that is, it is this peace that transcends all understanding. No one gets it. The peace that others see and wonder, what is it about you that's different? The peace that is a militant guard over your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. Is it any wonder that fear not is mentioned so much in the Bible that you could read one verse every day of the year and not repeat? But God, what if the people you have in place right now do not have my best interests in mind? What if they mean to rule for harm? Now, some of you may say that's silly, but we need to look about the, look at this because the country, the way the country is divided at any given time, there's approximately 50% of the entire population feeling this way. And of that 50%, there's definitely people that are your brothers and sisters in Christ. And God's answer is Deuteronomy 31.6. Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them, for it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. This verse was centered around Moses after leading the people through the wilderness, and they had sent scouts out to check the promised land, and they saw these great giants, and they were terrified. They wanted to go back to captivity. Moses was the only leader these people had known outside of captivity. And Moses tries to encourage the people that God has been with them and he will not leave them. He will get them through this as he promised. Do you see this picture? The people were so afraid of their future that they saw in the land of the giants that they were willing to go back to captivity and bondage. Are we so afraid of what we see that we are willing to live in our spiritual bondage? Or are we going to be strong and courageous? Are we going to trust that it is the Lord who goes with us, that it is he that will not leave or forsake us? Hebrews 13, 5 says, let your character be free from love of money and be satisfied with your present circumstances. Wait, what is God asking us to do? Be satisfied with your present earthly circumstances and with what you have. For God has said, I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. I will not, I will not. I will not in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake you, nor let you down. Relax my hold on you. Assuredly not. Four times he says it when I was looking at that. And here in Hebrews, the writer is really quoting Joshua 1.5. He was standing on the promise that God had given to Joshua as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. So we are to be strong, confident. We are to be of good courage, as it says. So we don't need to worry about praying for those and if they've got our best interests in mind, because God is on his throne. Only you be strong and very courageous that you may do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Turn not 
from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night that you may observe and do according to all that's written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous and then you shall deal wisely and have good success. Often people complain that we as a nation have taken God out of our schools, but where is God's word, his law, his precepts? Where is it in our lives? We're walking testimonies. It's, is it always coming out of our mouth? Are we meditating on it day and night? Are we observing only what we want to, only what fits, what doesn't ask for too much, what isn't that painful? or all of it. I think when it comes down to praying for our country, we have a high note to end on. And this is most encouraging to me. As believers, we can look to God to fight for us. In Exodus 14, 14, it says, the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace and remain at rest. This doesn't mean that we don't take any action. It doesn't mean we can't. It doesn't mean that we're quiet. Proverbs 10.10 says people who wink at wrong cause trouble, but a bold reproof promotes peace. We can pray for our leaders. We can pray for our country and the spiritual uplifting of other believers in our country. And we can come against the enemy that tries to bring fear into your house because God is a God who does see us and he does fight for us. As he was with Moses, so he was with Joshua. And as Jesus said in Matthew 28, he is with us to the end of the age. For the Lord your God walks in the midst of your camp to deliver you and give your enemies over to you. Therefore your camp shall be holy, that he may see no unclean thing among you and turn away from you. Deuteronomy 23, 14. What is the condition here? The camp must be holy. We must be holy. Let this be our Salem moment this week. Let's pray for our leaders, our president, our vice president, our secretary of state, the White House advisors, our state leaders. Let's pray first for the salvation of these men that they would all come to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's thank God for them, for they were all created in the image of God. Let's pray that they come against the evil and not against the good. Let's agree in prayer that God will frustrate the plans of the wicked. May God be our spiritual borders. May God keep us from evil and harm. May he protect the family of believers across North America and those serving abroad. May the angels encamp round about us. Let's ask God to continue his refining process and making us holy before him. Let him search our hearts today and see if there's any wicked ways in us and change our hearts. May we encourage each other and lift each other up as we go through each day. Let us not be anxious, but hear our prayers with thanksgiving to the one true God. And may the peace that passes all understanding guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. May we come against anxious and evil thoughts with the word of God, resisting the devil and sending him away fleeing as we claim the biblical truths of God's word. I hope these words today have been encouraging to you and to your heart and your soul. And I challenge you to build your battle plan with God's word and try to memorize it. I pray the peace of God over each of you as you go about your day. Have a wonderful week. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Soul Medication. I hope you found it encouraging and a spiritual lift to your soul. If you're enjoying these messages, I hope that you will hit the subscribe, hit the follow, the free, and share them with others. You can also leave us a review. Feel free to visit our website. The link is in the show notes. Follow us on social media at Soul Medication 2023 on Instagram or Soul Medication on Facebook. You can find lots of encouragement, challenges, and resources such as my new devotional, How Well Is Your Soul?, available now on the website or from Amazon. Have a wonderful week and may God richly bless you.